and welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. Uh, just me and Nanny Dye. So we're doing The Irishman, Martin Scorsese's epic, I mean truly epic movie. Clocking in at a remarkable three and a half hours. Yes. Uh, we saw it at a preview at the London Film Festival. Starring uh, Robert De Niro as Frank the Irishman Sheeran. Al Pacino in the first film that Scorsese's worked with him on. Apparently years ago they wanted to do Modigliani, a biopic of the oh, artist. I saw the yeah. Yeah, 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 Which yeah. Uh, is one of those films, I'm often intrigued by films and programmes that weren't made as much yeah, as the ones that were Yeah, because he was made. a bit of a sword Modigliani, threw his girlfriends out the window. Oh did he? Like so that, quite yeah. gangster mob-like yeah, in his own yeah, way, okay. Yeah, yeah. And of course Joe Pesci playing Russell Buffalino, yeah, Buffalino. brought out of retirement by Scorsese. Yeah. And Harvey Keitel in there in a much more souped down Part. Oh, and of course, Stephen Graham playing the head of one of the contrary unions. Yes. They're all real figures. This is based on a true story. Yeah. It's based on the book, I Heard You Paint Houses. I know, which yeah. is a great title. Actually. Which was the book that Robert De Niro actually brought, brought to, to Scorsese, Scorsese, didn't he? Yeah. Which is intriguing. What sense of Scorsese do we have as film lovers and as a, a film going family? I love him. He's sort of like a master of cinema, I would mm. describe him as. I loved everything he did up to a certain point. Right. And then I would say the whole sort of gangster thing that came to its apotheosis or whatever you describe the highest thing of with, for me, with Goodfellas. So would and then it sank. Okay, so you're sort of saying that you were a Scorsese fan up until Goodfellas. Up until Goodfellas. Right, yeah. yeah. I, think a lot of I mean, I liked Wolf, as, as a lot of people say, I like Wolf of... Wall Street. Wall Street, but not as much as everybody else. I really liked Wolf of Wall Street, but long. interestingly, the first time I saw Wolf of Wall Street, I had a meeting to go to. I didn't realise it was three hours long. No. And, uh, it, Unnecessarily so. It was. It was a good 45 minutes too long. Yeah. Um, I, I was a fan of The Departed, though I despised the final shot of The Departed yeah, with the rat. Right. Uh, wasn't a fan of, was it Shutter Island that he did, that weird thing with... Oh, um, I didn't mind Shutter Island, funny enough, but not, only, only didn't mind it, no. that's not what I used to Did you to see Silence? Oh, I did, mm. and I thought, I now, too. I quite liked that. Right, I thought okay. that was, in a way, a return to form right. for me. Okay. Yeah. Within my, not that I ever do a top ten or a top five, but I would certainly say that Raging Bull is, is in my top oh, ten Raging films Bull, of, of all time. Yes, 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 yes. I think it was, it's just a meticulously, yes. perfectly crafted film. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, that was before the gangsters. Sort of absolutely, thing. and Casino was good. Uh, Goodfellas, I liked Goodfellas um, a lot, but uh, a lot of Mean them. Streets and, you know, I like, I like his early, I like yeah, a lot of his no, early like stuff. His so, yeah, well, going into this, so, I, I would say he's a massively influential, I mean, obviously, other little micro films that he's done, like After Hours, I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, he's made a lot of documentaries. So I'm a big Scorsese fan. Yeah. Uh, we characterise ourselves as Scorsese fans, we do. wouldn't you? We do, in this um, Now, this is being lauded as, in a sense, his massive return to the fold. Yes. This is yes. the big man, the big cheese, the big fromage, yes. he's back out from yes. the cold. Big he's, he's, he's um, you know, and so just to give a grab, so it's the story of of Jimmy Hoffa's, still to this day, not entirely known, no. death. Yes. You know, in well, in, in terms way, of we don't know how he died or who killed him. No. For sure. No, 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 we don't. No. And, th and so this film... And this doesn't throw any light. Well, it does. Well, but... it does, but... Well, it, it has its own suggestion. Now, I, I don't, I'm not having read the book. I don't know whether the book suggests something yeah. that Frank Sheeran himself... Apparently, Frank Sheeran, the Irishman in real life, yeah. went on and on and on about the fact that it was him who did it. And so, oh, well. and so, but, but a lot of people have disputed the claim. So oh, this okay. film, in a sense, is signing up to Frank Sheeran's yeah. kind of. Yeah. Um, and, and I wonder if even the historical context, though, for somebody like Hoffa, because I said to Maddie at one point, who was with us, um, he's a real character, you know, mm. he's in real life, and she said, "Oh, okay," but I could tell she was thinking, "So what?" Well, yeah. So yeah. before we get into the oh, rights sorry. and wrongs of anything, but so who is it about? What was this film about? As you went in and sat down to watch this. I knew we were watching a real life story about yeah. a real life guy called, yeah. called Frank Sheeran, yeah. played by Robert De Niro. Yeah. And I also knew that we were, but I had no historical sense of the character whatsoever, Jimmy Offer. No, I didn't, except that I did know, I did, I had, I've heard of him. Mm. And I've heard that, he, I know that that was the time when the union, I mean, in a way that era fascinates me because yeah. it's the time when unions ruled the whole of the Rust Belt. I mean, they ruled whole swathes of America. Well, and in a sense, they kind of ruled the very same demographic that Trump yes. has somewhat of a stranglehold yes. on now. Yes. And, and is constantly seeking I mean, to people get... were scared to death of the unions mm, in those mm. days. You went along with the union or you risked everything. I'm a 48-year-old man and yeah. I went in knowing 
uh, the JFK story, yeah. knowing the Bobby Kennedy story, yeah. knowing the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile yeah. Crisis, yeah. knowing all of that, which this story is very much placed against the backdrop of. Yes, it is. Um, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know who Jimmy Hoffa was. And, and so, yeah, I, I suppose I was surprised when I started to realise, all oh, right, okay, this is about union, this is about the work, workers' unions of America. Yes. And they're jostling for power. Yes. And if, essentially how the mob and yes. the mafia have infiltrated that system yes. and are running the show. Yes. Um, which, in, as you say, in and of itself is a very interesting it thing. Is. This film is notable for a number of things. Its duration is one thing. It's engaged in something called youthification. Weirdly, the almost the first sequence that you see in the film is De Niro, not youthified, but actually made up to look even older than he yeah, already is, yeah. in an old people's home. Yeah. And essentially, he's telling the story in retrospect. Yeah. And this is where I think, even from the get-go, it was a bit confused. So you had the device of Robert De Niro telling us the story in retrospect. Yes. And you had the device of a road trip. Yes. That to Scorsese, an interview is very important. Yeah. The device of the road trip. You've seen the same interview as yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. It forms a skeleton of the whole film. It absolutely. It forms a spinal, a spinal column, column of the film yeah. around which all the other action is going to yeah. happen. Now, having seen the interview with Scorsese, I thought, okay, I can buy into that. That yeah. makes kind of structural sense. That will orientate me. Yeah. It's Joe Pesci, Frank Shearer, and Robert De Niro, their wives driving across America yeah. in the present because they look that much older, yeah. but not as present as De Niro in the old people's home is yeah. even older. <laughs> Bloody hell. Exactly. And, then, and then the film proceeds to go through enormous numbers of flashbacks where yes. the youthification thing happens. Yes. So this is one of those films that was incredibly ambitious. It sought to use the same actors across the entirety of telling their entire lives. Yeah. Rather than in things like, is it The Godfather where they have different actors to play yeah, different, different which characters? Yeah, works very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Robert De Niro and the Old People's Home, I thought for me, mm -hmm. was a real wrong step early on. Because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe him. It, you know who he looked like? It reminded me of the character from Bad Grandpa. Oh, just Sitting there, that. sitting there. And it felt too literal. It felt too simple, too I obvious. I can't see anything but that now. Yeah, exactly, with his great testicles. Yeah, I didn't feel the thing about Bad Grandpa, thank God, otherwise right. that would have been the end of the film. <laughs> but, um, but I did... I didn't feel it even didn't work. That was fair enough because they didn't they didn't belabor that point. Mm. This is like a crib to grave story, isn't yes. it? Of, oh, of absolutely. Frank Shearer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, De Niro's character. And I mean, one of the interesting things that Maddie said when she came out, which was her frustration with the film, she said, "I felt like Robert De Niro's character didn't have any emotional arc. Yeah, that he didn't build to a point or get to come down to a point. And without giving too much away, I, I kind of agree with her." Yeah. And yet they clearly park at the front of this film, and a lot of the reviews obviously are picking up on the fact that he's been desensitised by the work that he did in World yeah. War II, where yeah. he's, there's that sequence where he's getting the prisoners of war to yes. uh, dig, dig their own grave, yes. and then he shoots them and they fall in. Yeah. I, I didn't feel that was villainous enough. I didn't feel he did it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought for the coldness and callousness that we felt within him, if you're yeah. the, or the, not callousness, but the the unemotional yeah. side yeah. to him, yeah. I could have understood it more if it was been. I was expecting savagery. Yeah. In World War II, it felt very sedate. No, I understand that completely, and I wouldn't disagree with that. But but I did disagree with you and Maddie in terms of this idea of a narrative right, from did De Niro. You? I actually thought he did. Right. There was one in the sense that we. I never expect from De Niro. Um, a sort of an idea of him being um, on the back foot of him, him sort of looking with sympathy at other characters. I always right. expect him to be the one dishing out, you know, violence. Yes. And I felt there was a distinct thing of, thing of him being sympathetic to some of the people. Did you? Around. I did. Yeah. And I felt it was in his eye. I mean, I thought earlier you were going to ask me about the youthification, which I thought was dreadful. For me, the first moment the youthification was having to be at its most extraordinary. Yeah. And perhaps that's why we didn't get a more embellished scene in World yes. War II. Yes, yeah, maybe. It was because it's quite a, it was a wide shot, he shoots them, they fall in, yeah. and, and that's kind of it. Yeah. To really establish the, the, the as I say, that sort of almost post-traumatic stress, stress that he would do, that he's yes. experienced, yeah. you need to be in his face yeah. and in his eyes. Yeah. And if yeah. you just use a young bloody actor. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. I, I thought it looked ghastly in yeah. that scene, and everyone was banging on about it. And yeah. I, I did, did you feel it get, got better? No, I think I just um, got used to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think we yeah. just sort of like allowed ourselves to... Yeah, I almost forced myself to sort of not almost not pay attention to that. Right. Um, 
And somehow De Niro for me, and I'll just sort of bring that up again because it's yeah. crucial in one sense, is that because some critics have said, haven't they, that they think he did he did a good job yes. um, character-wise. And I mean, I've always loved De Niro, but he always has played the same part, mm. more or less. Mm. I felt he was trying to do something different. Right. This, and I felt occasionally it worked. So you'd Usually say... when he was talking to another man, like Pesci or, or Harvey Ka you know, when he was talking to another man. I suppose you're right. I suppose there were moments where certainly, and, and, and this is where I think one, I think me and you disagree on this weirdly in terms of yeah. performance. You're right. You did see De Niro specifically with Pesci. Yes. As an underdog, which was kind of yes. an unusual thing. He was looking up to him yes. for kind of, he didn't want to sort of get things wrong. Yes, exactly. And I thought, I personally found Joe Pesci absolutely magnificent. Yeah. He magnificently underplayed it, and it really wrong-footed me because, of course, I think the thing about Pesci, which is probably why he went into retirement, is I think he burnt himself out. Yeah. With his it reminds me of you. The energy of the man was yeah. just so ferocious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought he was, but you, I know you kind of didn't. I thought he was nuanced. I thought he was menacing in a very ordinary way. I like. I mean, I do like all that stuff that they do in gangster films, where you know they'll say, like, you know, you paint houses, don't you? And they go, yeah. well, we need to take them around. You know, there's always yeah. a euphemism for being yeah. throwing someone in concrete and destroying yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but what did you think of Joe Pesci? You weren't such no, a fan. No, I wasn't. No, yeah. I just thought he was. He, he was all right. I mean, I wanted to like him. Don't get me wrong. And I thought, I suppose before I, before I actually saw him, I thought, oh, the youthification will will, will be seeing Joe Pesci mm. evolved. But he just looked like an old man to me, who wasn't really saying anything. I thought that's the difference, I suppose, is that I do feel De Niro was acting there. Mm. And I suppose Joe Pesci was, but it wasn't working for me. No, too. So no. what can I say? Um, there was the additional problem that you'd have many scenes where the youthification was doing working overtime on their faces, yeah. and then you'd see their bodies moving like those of 70-year-olds. Terrible. It's very odd. Yeah. And it does require a suspension of disbelief. And my argument would be it requires, for me, it required a larger suspension of belief than if they'd used a different actor. Yeah. In a weird and surely way. those were the moments where, I know enough about films to know that the director has the last word and you get director's cut mm. and whatever, but surely that was the moment where somebody should have said to Scorsese, we, we don't need all these long shot scenes of an old face, on a, of a young face on an old body trying to be young. I mean, there were there were loads I mean, they've spent a, a ludicrous amount of money on it. I think it's Industrial Light and Magic, but I think they've spent something like 25 million. I mean, it's a third of the budget or something yeah. has gone, has gone yeah. on this. And I do think that if it wasn't Netflix wanting to blow smoke up Scorsese's arse, yes. I think another studio, and that's why all the other studios walked away from it. Oh. They were all insisting. And I think the reason, I can see why on a creative basis, Sc uh, Scorsese and De Niro, would want to take it because oh, it gives yeah. them the continuity of performance. It's a yes. rel to relish that performance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, curious to want to go for such a long journey, in De Niro's yeah. case, with, okay, albeit some arc to his yeah. personality, but not much. No, not a lot. I mean, there's not, you know, his arc doesn't do that no, at all. No. His arc does that. Right. Yeah. And I think that was Maddie's frustration yeah, with no, him because was, I think we were all very excited about him. Yeah. Um, at, at times, the youthification made me feel that they were characters or their faces were characters. You, you won't know this, but when you play, play PS4 games, it's that computer game face, yeah. which is like, you know, the sort of glazed eyes. Yeah. And the, the other detail they'd given uh, De Niro was blue eyes, which yeah. obviously is the Irishman in him yeah, and all Irishman, that. Yeah. But um, that made me, that distanced me yeah. from him. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, blue eyes do generally do that, but then yeah. it just kind of, I didn't feel I was looking into his soul at any point. So we're set within this unionized world. But for me, you know, I like Joe Pesci at the edges. Yeah. Then you've got Jimmy Hoffa. And I felt that the absolute, I, I, don't, I never thought I'd say this because no. I've never really been a massive Al Pacino no, fan. No. And I thought he was all right in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He didn't have much to do. I've always found him a bit, you know, there was a, I think he did uh, The Merchant of Venice, which I thought he was quite he good as Shylock, right. he was yeah. all right. He was my guilty pleasure in the film. I thought he came at this with vim, vigour and verve. Yeah. And again, if they hadn't youthified him where they did yeah. at times, he didn't need it. His, he was, he was methoding it. Yes, To the point was. of, my he God, was. this was... Did you, you didn't like Al Pacino though, did you? Well, it's not that I didn't like him, it's just that I thought he was methoding it. Right. And because the, because the youthification didn't work, <laughs> I felt I was seeing an extremely old man keep <laughs> losing his temper. And I mean, I was a huge, right. unlike you, I was a huge Pacino fan in yes. the days of Serpico and Dog Day Afternoon. I thought yeah. he was incredible. But, um, and those rages that he has, yeah, yeah. he just didn't, he was 
uh, an awful lot of this film for me, and I'm talking as the oldest person yeah. in the three of us that went to see it, they're too old. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of sounds dreadful, and I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but okay. even with youthification, they're too old. Well, The Guardian describes them as delivering performances of wintry brilliance. Would you agree? Oh, you probably would about De Niro, maybe. Uh, yeah, but as you say, I, I really have to go. But yeah, right at the top of that arc, I can say you gave about <laughs> one second of which huh. one Okay, well, I mean, I did, I did enjoy, I did enjoy Al Pacino's turn. It's a little bit like when you're squeezing a lemon on a lemon squeezer. Mm and you've squeezed all the juice out. Yeah. I was pushing my half of lemon yeah. so hard onto my lemon squeezer. Yeah. Sounds like a very dodgy analogy. Exactly. And as I was pushing and squeezing, I was squeezing, <laughs> in a well, sense, De, Niro, yeah. De Niro's character was my lemon skin. Yeah. And Al Pacino was the lemon squeezer. And yeah. I was squeezing it hard to get that real sense of their relationship because there was a there was a friendship there and there was a yeah. loyalty. And I think Respect. that's when Scorsese's at, Yeah, and Scorsese's at his best when men are talking to each other about, this is the line, mate. This is the line, don't cross the line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I really, where I, where I kind of enjoyed the film most was where essentially De Niro is imploring in his own way, yeah. uh, Hoffa to step back, yeah. reduce, move away. Well, he away. did give respect. I thought yeah. in his acting, he gave respect. Yeah. Both to Pesci and, um, and to Al Pacino. Yes. Yeah. He, he conveyed that. However right. he did it, I right. don't know, but to me, he did. He, and what about characters like Harvey Keitel? I mean, I was well, actually... Harvey Keitel was so slight, wasn't so he? Slight. I mean, he's, there's more of him in the direct line insurance ads. <laughs> than there is. They gave us nothing. No. Nothing. Well, and also, uh, you know, you've got the ubiquitous... Um, what did we think about the camera work? I thought at times... Yeah, just average. It right? was just average. It yeah. did feel average. And I'm used to... On the one hand, this is where you become a victim of your own success if you're Scorsese. On the one hand, you want those sweeping, yeah. cinematic, steady cam shots. You know, he's the yeah. master of coming through a door yeah. and oh, the absolutely. character walking in underneath the camera yeah. and all coming in. And so you've got the POV, but you've also a little bit... So you're almost the... You're, you're in the gang. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, in. yeah. You, you want all of that. So we got some of that. We got a little Not bit. brilliantly, though. No, Not no. like in the way that you did no. in Goodfellas and, and no. Casino. No. Um, but you also got moments where you felt he was trotting out devices that he's used in other films. So for example, there would often be the freeze frame used on, yes. on subsidiary characters, yes. where he would then deliver you the text of who they were and how they died. That that's, was spectacularly bad. It was a spectacular miss, and he's the master of that shit, because he, you know, when he freeze frames yeah. anything, it usually works really well. And I just, I'll tell you where I felt it went wrong. A, the characters were too subservient to what yes. we knew of the plot already, so, so you didn't care. No. You didn't follow them through when you saw them no. in the scenes, no. that didn't matter. And you hadn't yet related them to anyone else no. in the film. And also, everything's moved on in the world, so that in so many films now, when they do do that, which they probably learned from Scorsese yeah. in the yeah, beginning, yeah, absolutely right. but when they, when they do it themselves, it's so much more effective. Yeah, 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 it, yeah right. That was mis that was a real It was a mistake, mistake wasn't it? Yeah. It was a mistake. Yeah. And yet, there were a couple of occasions where, I don't even remember, there was one scene where I think De Niro's in the car and there's the slow-mo of the the car wash. Yes. And then there was the slow-mo yes. of a fight in a crowd. I thought there were nice moments where they yeah. used slow-mo. And, and that's not to say, but I couldn't work out whether I just loved the slow-mo. Yeah. I, I certainly couldn't have said with my hand on my heart that it was, where, where Scorsese does it so well in the past is that it will complement and amplify yes. the emotional or narrative Absolutely. impact of what's going on. I didn't feel like the style complemented no. or, or, or echoed or, no. or, or did anything to, the, to no. what was going on in the story. No, no, I didn't. No. What did you think about how the film dealt with violence? I was shocked by how little violence there well, was. Well, <laughs> yeah, that sounds wrong to say, doesn't it? But yes, I mean, it, I don't know whether we were supposed to be building up to the Hoffa death or not. Yes. I mean, I can see why it seemed to be like thrown away in one way because mm. nobody did actually know maybe who killed him and maybe maybe. So maybe yeah. they wanted to fudge it. Yeah, yeah, maybe they wanted to fudge it, but but somehow it seemed very half-hearted. Well, you've got to have the courage of your conviction. If you're yeah, not you going to fudge it and you've got someone killing him, yeah. then really build to that moment. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, on the one hand, I seem to be saying the opposite of what I'm saying because I do think round the issue of of Hoffa, De Niro was acting. He was mm. acting, uh, you know. Um, being subservient, being nervous, being not wanting to have to do the job mm. that he knew he'd got mm. to do. All of that was in his face and that's often not, but it was. 
But then the actual death was almost off camera. And, and well, I think what he might have been going for, because I mean, his, his, one of his hallmarks, Scorsese, is the sudden violence yes. from nowhere. If you think yes. of Joe Pesci with yes. a pen yes. in the neck yes. and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and the stabbing in the boot yes. and all that. And taxi driver, obviously. Yeah. You know, I could see that he was trying to go for the the shock of the ordinary. Yeah. So yes. it's like a walk-in. And, and even right down to, if you listen to the sound effects of the gun bullets, yeah. the gunshots, very matter of fact, doo, doo. Yeah. It's just, there's no yeah. glorification. No. He's almost stripped it back to being uncinematic. Yeah. But that tugs against Scorsese and that kind of tugs against the impact in a way. Because in the end, what happened for me was it, it sort of, it, it drained any significance out of the violence whatsoever. Now, I know we're supposed to be sort of viewing off for, uh, uh, Sheeran, French Sheeran, as this kind of, you know, he doesn't feel anything and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And he just, it's such a sort of methodical thing. Yeah, yeah. But I, I tell you what I thought he could have done, Scorsese, which would have been interesting, was given us more of an insight into perhaps this was the only way he could kill and how he coped with, you know, the, the, the incidental nature of shooting yeah. someone was the only way he could do it. Well, I hate to say it, but I, I feel he did try oh, do to you, do that. You feel I feel do. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, it kept my he kept my attention during mm. that whole thing, and I was trying to think afterwards why, because I, I mean, he's not a sort of his face doesn't usually show his no. emotions, does he? In a way, Robert De Niro, but he did sort of keep my attention right. during that. Yeah. See, I felt I wanted more, and I felt in a weird way, I felt the camera kept pulling back from yeah. letting us in closer because yeah. of this freaking youthification thing. I mean, I just think it was almost like they had a toy box that they just overused and then and it, it compromised they, shots, yeah. it compromised well, scenes. Well, I would absolutely agree with that because something, yeah. something, something was compromised. Something was compromised. i tell you what it felt like the whole, now, I mean, we are on our own in saying this. Yes. Th this, this is why we're trying to take such a detailed, meticulous approach yeah, to this. Yeah. I recognize that this has got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Everyone is talking about it winning Oscars and yeah. doing all this kind of shit. Um, you know, as you, we we have the Scorsese stripes, we understand the tropes, we understand what he's, he's on about. But this film for me, about two and a half hours in, started to really sag and suffer. Yeah. And part of that was the time, yeah. the duration. Yeah. Another part of it was the, um, now this is a strange analogy. At times, this film felt like and I was made to feel by this film how I was made to feel by my granddad when he went into great lengthy descriptions of how to drive <laughs> back to London through the New Forest. Okay. You need to take the A3. It felt like a long meandering, almost slightly dementia-like obsession with the finer nuanced details of union life. Yeah. And, the, and I just didn't care. A conversation of old men. As you said, yeah. a conversation of old men. And it yeah. felt like all these old men were right up for this because it was their era and it's yeah. like it was like a pet project for them but yes no one else was really interested no and to return to a minute to your thing about the violence because that just suddenly occurred to me that yeah it's absolutely true that they you know it sounds like we we're asking for violence but given that it is one of Scorsese's mm. tropes and especially in his gangster films I feel I, I mean those scenes where they showed you the name and, and number of whoever was going to be killed next and it was Car blowing up after car blowing up after mm. car blowing up, which, which Scorsese has always given us. Mm. But being as we didn't know the characters, didn't know anything about no. them, whether that was Scorsese himself thinking, well, I've, I've covered the violence because all these yes. people had dreadful ends. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. But we couldn't have cared less no. because the main, you know, to use Maddie's phrase, the main arc of the film was taking us along, and Mark's just said it really, an old people's home where somebody is discussing the right way to get along the A40. I mean, I mean, I mean in a way, that was I mean, what he was doing. It, it was, was a road like, trip was, along the A40. It was like a really interesting story told by a really boring old man. Yes, I hate to say <laughs> it. I hate to say Or in this case, four really boring old yes. men. Yes, and, and, and much as it pains me. And oh my God, it pains me so me. much. I couldn't have been more excited sitting down no. to see this. I've bought into the Rotten Tomatoes, I've read all the reviews, I've read all the interviews, yeah. I was equipping myself, I was um, looking forward to cinematic references. Because, yeah. you know, the thing about Scorsese is that he's a bona fide cinephile. He is. You know, and I thought, yeah, three and a half hours to luxuriate. And, yeah. and you know, and on the one, it's, it, you know, Maddie, I'm going to sort of come off the fence, Maddie was bored rigid. Yeah, she, she, she was. She's given she it really a score, was. she's given yeah. it a score of one out of ten. Yeah. And what was that for? That was for, oh, I think yeah, it was Al Pacino, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Al Pacino. Al Pacino, I think she, she liked his character. Yeah. 
and, and, and it, even as I say, I like Al Pacino, he was quite cartoony. Yeah. It was quite two dimensional. Yeah. I mean, Scorsese is a master of coming back in the sense that I saw Silence and I thought it was wonderful. I wasn't a huge fan of The Departed like a lot of people. Mm. What I'm trying to say in that is that he makes a film which maybe isn't my cup of tea or up to whatever I think. Then in the next one, it'll be brilliant. Mm. And so with this, I was thinking, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with this and think, assume that it's going to be brilliant. Mm. But it, you know, as it went on, I, I didn't get as bo so bored that I'd fall asleep, but I was having to work really hard. I, I had really to work really hard. hard. It yeah. was really agonising yeah. in, in parts. And it pained me enormously because nobody wants to to say that. No. I mean, what were some to... of your standout? I mean, for example, I, I felt... It's hard to find standout. It's, it's hard to, well, I do have one standout scene, and it, it, it was the Stephen Graham Al Pacino one. Oh, yeah. And I felt, that you felt the old Scorsese sparking up where they were, he was talking about being late. And I thought that was great because what, what you yeah, felt, that and that's where Scorsese is absolutely at his best, where yeah. you've got, and it's that electric, it's the electricity between men. It's that, are oh, you laughing at me moment. But he's brilliant with, but he's brilliant with the low hum of electricity yeah, between is, men. And is. I think that's where Joe Pesci was a nice antidote to that, say a scene yeah, like that, because Joe yeah. Pesci was like low high volt, you know, yeah. low hum, yeah. high voltage. Yeah. And then you've got Stephen Graham, who's just, he, he's you know, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. He is brilliant. He's brilliant this. I just wish he'd had more to do in it, or yeah. I would just walk in and look, look serious. But there was a slight problem with him in the sense that I felt like they'd either youthification to him or done the opposite. <laughs> he <laughs> looked older than everyone. Right. <laughs> he looked older in the than end, everyone. I felt like I was at Madame Tussauds. I do, I do ridiculous. worry they kind of, maybe they just started, you know, sort of photo yeah. affecting everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that scene for me, yeah, it really came was, standout because yeah. it was funny, yeah. it was crisp, it was witty. Yeah. And as I say, that electricity, which I love yeah. between his characters. Yeah. And because that scene was so good, I'll tell you the one thing that I, I really felt when I came out, and I was, uh, we were driving home. I really felt Scorsese needed his, his stable mate on this film in the script writing department. I think he needed Paul Schrader. Schrader. Yeah. Because what Paul Schrader, who wrote Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, I believe The Last Temptation of Christ as well, yes, didn't he? he? Did. What he brings is that Calvinist, religious, redemption, betrayal stink. Yes. And okay, he did it in First Reformed again, yeah. and it might be his, he's telling the same story a million times. Yeah. But I tell you what, it's probably. It's the standard narrative for most of us, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that idea of... And I felt... I just felt De Niro's character needed... We needed those morals threaded I through a like, bit more. I felt like De Niro... To be fair to De Niro, and I... You know... I felt he was trying to give us some of that yeah. without the, the without the script, script backing him up. Yes. Yeah, you're probably right. In his face, in he his was probably eyes, thinking, "I his... wish I fucking had Schrader's yeah. script." Yeah, without without anything to lean on. Wow, Schrader and Scorsese have they fallen out or something? I don't know, but he could have got somebody else, surely, or something. I know, I know. But um, I felt that he wasn't given any help. I didn't think the there. script was very good. It was, no, I didn't. I mean, I really didn't. I, didn't. I mean, I know it's based on a book and what have you, but I I really missed that sort of. You know the guilt, the redemption, and and especially, and we give it, we're giving it away, especially as we built up. And that's my point with the Jimmy Hoffa death scene, yeah. and De Niro, and how it was dealt with. I think in Schrader's hands, yes. we would have had many more scenes yes. around that yes. that would have made it so problematic. Yes. So that okay, the actual scene might have been swift, yeah, but you'll have seen the agonising moments yeah. around it, and yeah. I just think he would have layered them a little bit better yeah. in there somewhere. He tried to give us that, but I. It, it, with as you as we've just said, with no help from a no, at all. No. I felt he was really in at times acting his socks off with his blue eyes and his yeah. youthification face, but not really getting any help. The other thing to the important thing to remember is De Niro's character is quite stupid. He's not bright. No, no, he's not bright. And so that's, that's another sort of you know, yeah. tricky thing to, to, yeah, to factor in. Uh, yes, that is it's quite actually. hard to play in an anti-hero hero of a film. And also, De Niro so clearly is. Yes. So that he's playing a, he's yeah, playing yeah. a, a, a non-bright person, yeah. a bright person playing a non-bright person. And in, in that sense, that must be quite hard. So what was your <laughs> sense? <laughs> His eyes were actually saying help. Me. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Music didn't really stand out no. to me too much. And no. music usually is such a significant thing. I mean, yeah. in one of the trailers, the music was absolutely sensational. And I yeah. didn't really feel the presence of it. The whole film felt vaguely like everyone was a bit mogadoned. It didn't, it didn't really, I didn't feel any emotional. I know you did with De Niro a bit, but even, even De Niro's character's emotional truth was a bit blunted. So everyone felt a bit blunted. Emotionally. That's what happens when you get old. Is it? I hate to say. And all, all the people watching this at yeah. home are going, no, you don't have to. But that was the imp overall impression yeah. in the end. It was that 
you just felt like this was a meeting of friends that knew each other really well were going to tell you a great tale mm. and told it you and you were all asleep by the end of it. Why have, why is everyone without exception giving this 10 out of 10 and 100%? I think because... We're going to be a solitary voice. Yeah, we're going yeah. to get a lot of hate. Well, as we've said, we don't, we don't want to say any of these things really. It gives us no pleasure no. at all. Uh, I just, I think a big thing to think about is that he was given too much leeway. Yeah, I He agree. was allowed to go on too I long. I think there's a lot to be I said mean, for it. I mean, yeah, he says control. in one of his interviews it was great not to have a time limit. He needed a time limit. Mm. Maybe if somebody had said to him, look, bring this film in at this, mm. it, it would, would have, have tightened up different. his storytelling. Yeah, but yeah. the long, long things of being in the old people's home, then here, then here, then here. I mean, there was a point towards the end where he was taking it to grave, where I thought, I can't bear this no. anymore. Please just hurry up and die. No, and by then, I mean, I'd sort of given the film everything I'd got, and then we went on for another hour after that. I, well, and I have to confess, in the final, well, some of the final scenes, I thought he was going to leap up, throw his testicles over his shoulder, and run <laughs> off like bad grandpa. I mean, he, you know, it was that, I mean, okay, they might have spent a lot of money on the youthification, but Jesus Christ, De Niro looked ridiculous as an older, older. Old man. I know. You know what I mean? I know. Okay, well let's sum it up then. Was it a real disappointment? Um, I felt I was working as hard as Scorsese for it not to be. Right. But um, yeah, it was a huge disappointment. And the fact that, uh, I mean, you know, it's just interesting. I mean, Maddie's a huge cinema fan. And the fact that she was dying beside me, you know. Yeah, she was asleep. Pieces, she never she sleeps in a film. Asleep. She couldn't bear I mean, it. I mean, she, found the, she found all of the specifics and the obsession with the detail yeah. of unions and dates. She just found yeah. it tedious. Yeah, I, it was tedious. It was tedious. And, <laughs> and as you said, if there was nothing Scorsese about it in terms of cinem cinematography or violence or any of his tropes, that he uses that we're all used mm. to. If there's none of that, what are you supposed to be watching? What, what are we watching? Mm. You know, one or two long shots behind, as you say. Well, I think right? it's telling that, that critics like Peter Bradshaw, who himself is probably the same age as, yeah. you know, a bit younger than Scorsese, but that they would see this as a sort of really mature interrogation of masculinity. I mean, I was I was wanting to come at it like that. Okay, yeah. there's because I'm all up for a film about an interrogation of masculinity at a certain age when you've lived a life of violence. Absolutely. And you've become desensitized to what you're going through. I mean, I think that's absolutely right yeah. for exploration. There's a much, there's, there is a really interesting film to be made about but this that, wasn't, but this ain't <laughs> it. Basically. This didn't do that, no. did it? No, no, no. And I, again, I go back to it. I do think it's the right, the right script. I, I would give it, what would I give it? It's a hard one. Mm. 4.5. 4.5. And that's and, and that is mainly for De Niro because I mm. felt for him with no script and no help from anybody and the added unbonus whatever the unbonus is of being made to look old. Yeah. Older and, and younger. younger. And when your body's older. Was <laughs> just ridiculous. I don't know how he was expected no. to do anything. He managed and blue eyes which yeah. was so un so it would be that. Four and a half. Four and a half. You know, the reason we wanted to do a really long review of this was I wanted to embrace and accept the fact that this has been critically lauded everywhere. And I yeah. wanted to really sort of put it under a microscope yeah. and qualify our passion for the work of Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. And our love of it. Um, and, I, and I'm all for a director who you know for certain things, changing, shifting, maturing, doing something different. Yeah. That's why I think The Last Temptation of Christ was a wonderful addition yeah. to his, you yeah. know, very different, but but very Scorsese in, yeah, a, in a different yeah. way. So I came to this thinking, okay, this is a different prospect, this is a different project. Um, three and a half hours, you know, a lot of people have talked about whether it would, you know, it would have lent itself well to being serialized. I came at this as a film, it was given to me and presented to me as a film. Yeah. Um, I found the very choice of subject matter querulous mm. from the outset because if, as I, as I said before, if as a 48 year old I'm having to stretch my interest levels towards it, mm. um, you've lost most of your younger audience. Yeah. I, think, I think most of the critics can only be enthralled to Scorsese in the way that we were, but I think they're actually reneging on their responsibilities as critics. As critics yeah, yes. because it's all right to say that a Scorsese film isn't as good as something. Yeah. And we all want this to be his best, and maybe there's a sense that this could be one of his last films, but yeah. it's 
not his best. No. This is not his best. It's, the script is is leaden. Yeah. The performances spark into life every now and then. I mean, like you prefer De Niro. I thought De Niro was all right. I don't think it was bad. No. But I just didn't feel enough happened no. across three and a half hours to sit with him. No. Um, I thought Al Pacino provided just a much needed within an otherwise yeah. barren sort of landscape, yeah. a much needed spark of life, as yeah. did Stephen Graham, though he wasn't there for long. Um, I, th I like just seeing Joe Pesci, that was an indulgence because he's yeah. been one of my favourite actors for years. Just to see him at a low-key level was yeah. quite different. Yeah. But I just felt like this was a really, it was like a really interesting person that I'm really interested in and I admire telling me a story about something that I have to feign interest in yeah. at a party. Yeah. So I'm sort of going, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm just not interested. No. It didn't, it didn't develop ideas in the way that even, say, Wolf of Wall Street was a great development to his yeah. canon of films. Yeah. Because he was like translating that machismo and ruthlessness to a non-killing environment. Exactly. With a killer instinct. Yeah. And so we were back, it's almost like back in his familiar territory, there was a lack of richness to just killing yeah. to be able to talk about. Yeah. It's not just about killing, but it no. wasn't sufficiently about betrayal. It wasn't about redemption. No. I didn't feel the great, torrid, tortured sense of the soul. Yeah. You know, you look at something like The Joker recently, which, okay, yeah, pays credence to a lot of Scorsese's films, but that's because Scorsese's early films were it all about that Absolutely, tortured soul. Yeah, I didn't yeah. feel any torture in no. this. So I, 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 was, I was really, really disappointed. Yeah. I was bored for great swathes of it. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, if I was to give it a score out of 10, I'd have to, sorry guys, I'd have to give it a three out of 10. Yeah. It was, it was tedious. Yeah. It I was. mean, I found it tedious. It was tedious. Oh, it was. Marty. It's Marty. Marty, we don't like saying anything. You don't at all with your lovely eyebrows and your no. passion for cinema. And your passion for everything, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, mate. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.